Hey, it's time for Illustration Masterclass, and I'm your host, Kyle T. Webster. Thank you for joining me as always, and I hope everybody out there is happy and healthy and doing great on what is over here a beautiful Friday, a little bit chilly, but pretty nice. Uh, thinking about maybe playing a little tennis this weekend. How about that, gang? Got any plans? Let me know in the chat over on Behance, be.net slash Adobe Live. If you're watching from somewhere in the world other than the United States, where I happen to be, I always love to hear about it and know where people are tuning in from. So please do let me know. Now, today's going to be a lot of fun. We are going to be doing one of my favorite techniques of all time, and that is drawing with selections. Now, I did do a master class where I was making selections and filling with the um, paint bucket tool. Today, it's different. Today, we're going to be using custom brushes to draw inside. Now, what's the difference, Kyle? Well, the difference is you have a ton of control if you're using brushes when you paint inside selections. You can control how much of the area you've selected that you want to paint inside. You can, of course, use different brushes inside the selections, etc. You get the idea. We're going to take a look at it right now. So I'm going to jump over to Photoshop and let's get cooking. Okay, gang, here we go. Alrighty. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Megan. Hi, Kathleen and Rob and Christelle and Heba and uh, Wade, nice to see you. And um, let's see, the Miss uh, RB, nice to see you as well. Elizabeth, hi, hi. Um, trying to go through here and see who's joining us. Uh, Bobby, what's up? <laughs> it's going well, thanks for asking. I had a nice Thanksgiving, just chilling out with the family, nothing fancy. Um, and I hope everyone out there, if you do celebrate that, had a good time as well. Nice to be together with people. So what do we have here? We have a little fox looking up a little squirrel, getting to be kind of a winter time situation here. So I thought we'd do this today. I'm going to go ahead and let's just go ahead and do this. We're going to start by taking this sketch and just sliding this branch on down here a little bit like that. I kind of want to do that. I kind of want to take everything and just slide it on over this way, more sort of centered, I think, for this composition. Um, this is the thing about Photoshop and working digitally, isn't it? You can always move stuff around, right? So there we go. All right, isn't that fun to just be able to do that? It's like a superpower. You are the master of your universe when you're working digitally, right? Okay, so here's my little sketch. And what I want to do now, there's so many ways to finish out a piece. Uh, of course, I could just paint right away, start using a gouache -a go go or something. Use one of my favorite brushes to just paint. But today it's different. Today we're going to make selections. We're going to paint inside of those selections and see how that informs the way in which I move through this from start to finish. And my goal is to finish this illustration with you all today. So let's see. Maybe it's possible, maybe not. We only have about an hour together, so maybe, maybe not. All right, the polar bears are getting the rackets ready. Haha, <laughs> it's funny, I like it. Hey, Jeff from Montreal, salut, ça va? J'espère que tu vas bien avec toi. Est-ce que c'est ça va? Ça va si je t'appelle Titoi, Tutoi? À part là, je peux utiliser vous, mais je ne sais pas si on va être si formal. OK? Now, let's do it. What do we need? Gang, all you need is a lasso tool. Okay, got one of those right here. L is the shortcut on your keyboard for that, right? The other thing you need are brushes. Well, guess what? We got a whole smorgasbord over here. Look at all these brushes. Oh my goodness sakes. Okay, Kyle, where do I get all the brushes? Well, gang, if you're a Photoshop subscriber at any level, if you subscribe to Fresco, whatever, um, you want to use custom brushes from the library that I uh, uh, build out every quarter here at Adobe. Um, well, guess what? It's so easy. You come over here to this little drop down menu in your brushes panel right here, and you go to get more brushes. And when you do that, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see this, okay? A sign in page. All right, you're going to see this handsome fella right here. You just go ahead and you sign in with your Adobe ID. Sign in to download right here. And once you've done that, you're going to see over 2,000 brushes organized in different categories for all of you to enjoy and make the most of. So that's what you want to do. Okay, folks? Word to the wise. Let's move on to the illustration. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to knock this, um, this opacity back. By the way, before I do that, check this out. Got a whole bunch of actions here. I use a ton of actions uh, normally when I'm working. I, in live streams and things like that, I prefer not to because I don't get to then explain what I'm doing to people. Um, but when I'm working on my own, I use actions. 
These actions are actually available if you want them. They're over on my Gumroad page, gumroad.com slash Kyle T. Webster. The only reason I bring it up is if I want to decrease uh, the opacity rather than coming over here and fiddling with a little slider, you can see I just have this. I just tap on opacity 20 right there, opacity 100, 20, 50, 20, 50, whatever I want. All right, so I'm just going to knock it down to 20% and that's going to make it easy for me to draw over this. All right, now I'm going to make a layer underneath this actually because what I want to do is set this layer, okay, my sketch, to a layer blending mold of multiply. Why, why, why? Because that way, no matter what I do underneath, I'll still be able to see my line work. Okay, so if I were to fill this with color, right, it's easy for me to see all those lines. And when I get to a point where I feel confident that I don't need to look at them so much, I'll turn that layer on and off, that sketch layer, toggle between the two, right? All right, now I did just fill in some color. That's not what we're doing today. So goodbye, we're getting rid of that, but we are keeping the layer. If you wanna be good, you can label your layers, right? I'm very bad about that. I'll call this one color. All right, just to keep things clear, but I'm gonna be making multiple color layers as you'll see. But starting off with the background, okay? Now in this case, I'm not gonna be working with any selections right out of the gate. I'm just gonna throw a color back there. Um, it's a crisp, cool winter day. Do I want it to be morning? Do I want it to be evening? What do I want? You know, so many choices. Now, this is why I like to work in layers. I can always change my mind. I can use adjustment layers. I can mess with how things are gonna look later on down the road. You're never truly committed if you're working in a non-destructive way here in Photoshop, and that's the key. So just thinking about it now, I'm thinking I might kinda wanna do something like this. Kinda go with like a sort of a, a greenish kinda yellow sky, okay? I know that sounds weird, but I just wanna see how that plays out and then fool around with it a little bit later. All right, so we'll just see how that's gonna play out. And I'm not gonna just fill, I'm gonna use paint, uh, paint to tools here, brushes. Now, to do this, you have so many choices. Uh, today I have, let's see, the fall 2022 brushes, I have the fall 2021 brushes, I've got these Keith Haring brushes, um, which you can grab from that same page. The David Bowie brushes, which are a free library available to everybody right now, okay, through the end of the year. Uh, a lot of cool brushes in there. For example, if I were to use the Heroes Heavy brush, I'm just gonna paint with that. And you'll notice that what's cool about this brush is that every time I make a new stroke, you can see evidence of the strokes that came before it, okay? It's not just a flat color, if that makes sense, okay, gang? So if you're interested in doing things like this that have a bit of texture, and that's a lot of what we're gonna be doing today, then this is where custom brushes are your best friend. They really come in handy, all right? Nothing like a nice set of custom brushes to make your art sing. Sing, 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 sing. Of course, you gotta have an okay composition and a sketch and all those fundamentals, okay? But we know that, right? You all know that. I'm not telling you anything you don't know, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, I'll cool it down a bit more, heading a little bit more towards blue, make it a little darker, and I'll just pop up here and start throwing in a few more little odds and ends there just to kind of make that a bit more interesting back there. Alrighty, what do you think about that? Fun, right? Okay, I'm gonna keep all this fairly light. You can see like my range of values here is not, I'm not up there, you know, working with super dark colors or anything. I can save the darker colors for what's in the foreground, what's happening here right in front of us, etc. Okay, and I'm, I'm just keeping this dark enough that if I wanna throw some snow in at the end, that might be kind of a nice thing to do, right? That might be a nice thing to do. Coming on down here, I can take this, I can lighten it up just a hair, just so there's a bit of a gradation, right? From the lowest part of the sky to the highest part of the sky in the composition here. And it's very, very subtle, very subtle, very subtle. All right, voila, voila. Now that could have been any brush, I could have chosen anything, but just to zoom in, you can see some of that textural quality, some of those nice little bits and pieces going on in there. You don't have to stick with one brush if you're selecting one single layer and messing around with stuff. If you wanna play, play, you know? Let's see here, for example, um, this hunky brush does some different stuff, okay? I could grab the hunky brush and throw some other little strokes in here, okay? Why not? Nobody knows, nobody cares, it doesn't matter. If you want a little bit more texture, you can grab the Major Tom right here and just throw some like weird star patterns in there. Some like galaxy stuff, right? See that? It's subtle. Nobody cares, nobody cares. You're not, you're not doing anything dangerous here, right? I'm working with the same colors. I'm just adding a bit of texture and a bit of weirdness in there. Nobody's getting hurt. What about the Ziggy brush? See that? 
This is all in that David Bowie set. You can grab this. Just go grab it. Grab it, be inspired, play around with it, see what it does for you, okay? A couple of little zigzaggy things in there. It's subtle, folks, it's subtle. It's not hurting anything. It's just adding a little bit of juice, all right? Now, I'm gonna add a new layer, and we're gonna start with the selection process. Now, I could start anywhere. I can work from foreground, uh, background to foreground if I want. I could just maybe concentrate on the fox right now and get those shapes right and things like that. Doesn't matter. I'm gonna start with the fox. Okay, I'll go ahead and label it fox. There are probably gonna be several layers for this fox, but what the heck. And here's what we do. You take your lasso tool and you just start tracing out a silhouette. And this is why the sketch is super handy. You don't have to work with a sketch, but of course it makes my job a lot easier. So here we go. I'm just gonna start making a shape here for the entire silhouette of this fox. And I can change my mind here and there about what things do, right? You have the freedom later to go ahead and play around with it if you want. And I'm gonna do this in little phases here. First, I'm gonna just knock in the basic silhouette. And then I can come in and I can make some changes later if I want, right? Like I wanna add a bit of action right there. Okay, maybe remove a little section right here. So easy to do, just hold down the Option key. If you're on a PC, hold down the Alt key. Okay, gang? PC users, hold down the Alt key. Mac users, hold down the Option key. And what that does is it toggles between additive and subtractive. Okay, so I'm either gonna be adding or I'm gonna be subtracting, right? So there's a basic silhouette. All right, now right out of the gate, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and take a nice sort of an orangey brown color, and I'm gonna fill that in and begin the, the painting process right there. So I'll switch out to a different brush set, all right? You know, let's go over to the fall 2022 brushes and see what we have. Lots of choices here. You got Mr. Chunk, that's a fun one. Uh, let's see what else we have. I want something that's got a lot of texture, a lot of interesting stuff going on, okay? Beast mode is pretty fun. Uh, the cuberkle brushes are really weird. Look at these. See that? Those are fun. And so just by tapping a few times in there, see what we're getting there? Some nice kind of geometric shapes and weird stuff. This is the beauty of using this method, okay? Just filling it with a solid color is fine too. Nobody's telling you not to, all right? But I am saying that you can have a lot of fun all right, by using custom brushes that have a lot of texture and a lot of cool stuff like this. Gonna push it a bit redder and a bit brighter. All right, and now what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna leave this area down here a little darker, but as I come up towards the head here, see this? Bit brighter, like that, up here. Bam, 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 bam. Just like that. Now, if I deselect, I want you to see here, hide my sketch, what a nice arrangement of textures and subtle shifts in color and all that there is. But if I zoom out, you'll see it's really just an orangey color down to a brown color. Okay, so the goal here is we're not trying to distract with the textures, we're just trying to add a bit of interest. The same can be said for the sky, right? There's some like interesting little patterns in there with some stars and swirls and things. It's so subtle, these zigzags too. None of it's gonna get in the way of the overall read of my darks, my lights, my colors, everything I'm trying to accomplish with this. It's not gonna get in the way. Okay, let's bring our sketch back here. Now here's the cool thing. You have options. Once you've got your silhouette down, there are a couple of things you can do, okay? You can work, for example, with clipping masks, one of your best friends in the world, all right? And so one thing to do is just add a layer right above the fox. And then what I do is I hold down Control and I tap on the title of that layer and here I say create clipping mask. You can also use a keyboard shortcut in between the two layers you wanna clip. I just forgot what it is right now. So um, somebody can help me with, out with that in the chat. I know you can, because you all know this stuff. Now once I've done that, okay, because it's a clipping mask, look, if I make a selection like this, all right, all the way out here, and then I just kind of design this little section inside, right, like this. Um, and then I say, okay, I'm gonna paint now with white or like a slightly off white here kind of color. Look, I'm painting over here, but nothing's happening. Why is that? Why is it only painting inside 
of the silhouette I already created. Well, that's the thing that clipping masks do, okay? And that's what's so cool about them is you can work within that silhouette and you can still paint, you can still make selections, you can still do all kinds of nifty stuff, but you're not limited uh, to, uh, you're not being, you're not having to paint and then like erase away the bits you paint. You can be super precise using that same silhouette. Um, and it's really a lovely thing to be able to do that. Okay. So we're going to get a little cooler here and we're just going to do this. We're just going to paint. All right. And I'll come in now and I'm going to remove away some bits like this. I've got my sketch here. It's really handy to just see exactly what it is I want to get rid of right and just hit delete see that couple ammo goodbye and like this I'm able to get really really precise to get exactly the shape that I want right there okay now what I could do next is I can add another layer and just throw that nose in on its own little layer up there right Kablam, 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 nosy nose. All right, and for that, of course, you could just do a solid color fill, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab the brush and just do a little bit of that. And later I can come take a look and see how that's gonna go, okay? Once again, hiding the sketch. See how we're building this illustration now, piece by piece? Now look at the white, okay? I'm losing it completely with the background. Do we want that? No, of course not. So what do we do? Well, lots of choices here. I can paint and make it darker, okay? I can lock the layer transparency of this layer, right? Tap on the layer and right here, lock layer transparency. Now I can only paint inside of that area, all right? And remember I deleted the areas I didn't need. So now I go a little darker out here on the edges like this, okay? And that's gonna make it read a lot more clearly. I can switch up my brush and use the Blade Run brush here. It's gonna be a little less crazy, right? And with light pressure, I can control how much of that, uh, those transitions are gonna appear, right? I can go a little lighter here. I don't want that those values to compete there, the, the brown and the So you can just continue to tweak to your heart's content, okay? Until you get what you want. See that? So now I can make that read more clearly. I can also always come in the background and I can just grab a lighter color here and punch up that contrast if I want right there by using different brushes, right? We had that Mr. Chunk brush. That's handy for something like this. So knowing the properties of these different brushes and knowing what they do makes it really, really easy for me to adjust accordingly. Okay. You also have a brush history right here. Did you know that? Right up here. Seven brushes, the most recently used brushes. Those are the brushes you're going to find right there for yourself to play with. All right. They'll always be there for you. And remember, if you're drawing in fresco, you have an unlimited brush history. Yeah, I'm not kidding, unlimited, right? You can close that file, come back to it a year later. You'll still know what the brushes were that you were using on a document. So now you're getting the hang of how this works. Okay, so let's come back and turn our sketch back on, all right? And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start to think about now sort of uh, sculpting the body, if you will. Now the sculpting is really not sculpting. What I'm gonna do is think about how to call out certain areas without using a lot of line. I might use a tiny bit of line in this drawing, but most of what I'm doing is making selections, painting inside of those selections, and seeing how far I can push that and make it work. And the first thing I'm gonna do is actually start with the ears, okay? And all I have to do is make another clipping mask, all right? So I go ahead and make a new layer. And once I make a new layer, after I've already done one clipping mask, if I tap on the original layer and make another layer, it'll automatically clip that. It's very convenient so I can continue working with that silhouette. All right, now here I'm just gonna cut away right here, and then I'm holding down the shift key and I'm gonna cut away right here on this side. All right, now holding down the shift key mean I was adding to my selection, okay? I'm gonna get rid of a little bit of that right there, okay. 
just get nice and picky. This is the stage where you want to get picky. All right, and you can always come back and change your shapes, but for now I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to go for these darker colors down here and push them a little more gray so they're not so saturated. All right, and now because it's clipped, look what happens when I start to paint. See that? I don't have to stay in the lines at all, right? The only part that matters is the selection that's actually bordering um, inside of the silhouette of what I'm painting, just like that, okay? Now I can deselect, hide the sketch, and take a look at that. Already we're getting somewhere. This is looking good, all right? Pausing for a moment to see what kind of comments we may or may not have. Um, hey, all right, let's see. Making clipping masks with existing layers. Hold Alt on PC or Option on Mac and hover between the layers and click. Cool, check it out, let's try it. I come over here and look at that. I hold down Option and there it is. There's that little icon saying clip time. All right, so I make a new layer, hold down Option. Thank you guys for helping me out with that information, I appreciate it. Sticking with this same color, pushing it just a hair darker, what I can do now is inside the body, I can use another clipping mask where I can just be really, really bold. If you feel confident in your decisions, you can start working on that layer directly. All right. Um, for example, what I could do is this. I can just say, I want to take this layer and I want to go ahead and lock its transparency. All right. And then I just want to do this. I want to make a little selection here like this. And I want that to be that, that front foot. Okay, and then I would grab this lighter color, just kind of throw that in there like this, and do a bit more of action like that. And there we go. So that could be, for example, like how I handle that front paw, so to speak, right? I could do it directly on the layer. All right, now that's one way to go, but you know, if you're like me and you like to be non-destructive with everything, you can always retain that selection and make yourself a new layer. So I'll just make a new layer. Now, if I don't want it to be clipped, I can just drag it up on top here and then say, release clipping mask, okay? And I did that by holding down the control key and clicking on that layer until I got that option. I'm releasing it from being a clipping mask. That means I can overdraw if I want. I can make this entire selection do what I need, I need to do. Come back to these colors again. Go ahead and fill that in. Like I just did a moment ago. And go even brighter. Do this. Paint inside. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go paint outside of that. Command Shift I. This inverts my selection. I'm inverting my selection. I'm coming back to the fox layer. Okay, what I want to do is kind of add a little bit of a shadow underneath here. And to do that, I'm just going to grab this color and go a little darker. Okay, see that? I'm just a little darker right here. And then here, I just paint a little shadow like that. And now when I deselect, you see what that does? That pops that little paw forward, right? That pops it forward. While I've got this darker color, okay, and I'll just push that a little bit darker. There we go. I can use it over here too to really make that paw pop, okay? And then I can take that color and start to use it down here, but that paw is gonna go into the snow. We're gonna have this little guy sitting in the snow. Okay, so bringing our sketch back for a minute, I've got some other shapes here I want to play with. All right, one of which is right here. So I'm just going to create that area, select outside of it, and I'm going to paint a little darker in here as well. Okay, here we go. Let me get that darker color. There we go. I paint a little darker right there, just up against the edge. Okay, then I'm going to Command Shift I. I'm inverting that selection again. Come over here for that brighter orange and just pop that over here on the top. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's hide this, the sketch. You see what that did. It's subtle, okay, but it's practical. It's useful, it really works. Okay, so now let's take a look at our sketch. Now we can make decisions here about the snow. This is a time where if I wanted to, I could start thinking about pulling in some other elements, you know, to get overlapped in front of the fox. There's no reason not to, 
So I'm just gonna pop over this clipping mask uh, layer here, and I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna go ahead and just pop a little snow kind of a shape here like this, okay? And all I'm gonna do is make that one big fat selection like that. Now going back to some of the crazier brushes we were using, okay? Let's try this. This is that um, that uh, brush that does the geometric craziness, I think. I might have to go back to find it here in a moment. Let's see, maybe I'll just do that to be safe. Cubercle. I'll use the original Cubercle brush. This one's not so crazy. Okay, go ahead and grab this same color with the fox. We're gonna push that cooler, okay? Cooler, like so. And we're just gonna throw some snow in here like this. It's gonna be a nice little shape like that. There we go. Go ahead and hide that sketch. And then come a little brighter for this section. Like so. Deselect, okay, and there you go. I've got a nice little layer there of snow. Now I could paint freely for just a moment to kind of push things around a little bit down here, even things out. And behind that, all right, I'll slide this layer down behind the fox. And I'll bring back my sketch and I'll look at my composition. I've got this nice, big lump of snow back here. Right, and that just keeps on going all the way back there. Now that whole area, I can paint inside of that. And by having that on a separate layer on the background, it's gonna be really, really practical. Right, I can go ahead and grab this again. I can push it a little darker, a little bluer. And I can just start painting back there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in later, okay, and I'm gonna punch certain areas brighter or darker to separate the two. So first I'll do this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide the sketch and I'm gonna take that layer and I'm going to, again, what's our friend? Lock layer transparency, I can do that. Or I can create a clipping mask, okay? In this case, I'll make the new layer. Let's try that trick. I'll just hover right here and clip it. Bam, it works like a charm. That's why I love that this is a community. We're all doing this together. I look at the chat, I learn something. Oh, it's just beautiful, isn't it? All right. Stony, what's up? Thanks for joining us. Foxy work, Kyle. Hey, thanks, Odari. Appreciate it. We're going to call this Fox Tesla. <laughs> He'll invent a machine to get rid of the snow. But I like snow. Don't get rid of it, please. All right. So now we've got this clipping mask right here, okay? Let's go ahead and let's grab some of this blue and let's go a little brighter right here, okay? And a little greener like this. And then we just start to throw a little bit of color there in the top. I'm gonna to make the brush a little smaller, right? How did I do that so fast? Anybody know? It's a key command. What key command? What key command? I use the bracket keys. The bracket keys are my favorite. All right, there we go, there we go. So we're lightening that up a little bit up there. Now that's a clipping mask, okay? Don't forget. All right, now what I can do is I can take that layer in front, okay, this layer right here in front of the fox, we can go even brighter, almost up to a full white. First we have to um, lock that layer transparency, okay? And then I can just do this, see? What does that do? It separates this mound of snow from the one behind it. See how nice that is? Neat little effect. And this brush is doing such weird, interesting things with that snow. It's just a bunch of circles and triangles and squares. It's a really fun brush. Um, but what it's doing is it's also creating some really interesting texture in there, isn't it? Right? This is so easy, you guys. It's so easy. It's so fun. Right? Anybody can do this. This technique is just telling you. It's addictive to work like this, right? And you're not, I mean, the brushes are doing the heavy lifting. That's the thing. See this? I'm throwing a little blue back there. Okay? It's separating it even more. We're getting a nice separation there between what's happening in the front, what's happening in the back. Lovely, lovely. Okay, now let's go ahead and bring our sketch back for a second. Alrighty, now for this, what I can do is I can literally just grab this color 
this dark color here, okay? And I can come in on top of all this stuff with the fox and all that, and I can just draw my eyes as a selection and fill the color, right? That's one way to do it. So we can try that first, like this. Maybe we do this kind of a shape, maybe this kind of a shape. Okay, just like that. And I could even, if I wanted to, just do this, like draw a shape for the mouth. See? You could also use a custom brush that has some texture and some interesting line quality to it. Up to you, right? There's, there's no rule here. No rule whatsoever. Um, let's go back to that fox's body and just behind it, okay, I'll make a new layer and drag it behind the fox's body. I'm gonna just do that tail really fast. I'm gonna knock it in. I'm just gonna go one and two, and around we go, just like that. Okay, now there's that shape. Make sure I got all of it. Okay, now we already know what colors I have to play with right here. Okay, so I can just grab those, whoops, what happened? There we go. So I can just grab those colors, paint inside super fast. Okay, make the brush a little smaller. And I'm gonna go dark again, right here. Why am I doing that? Does anybody know? I wanna push that bo back behind the body, right? Think about what we're doing here. And then come back brighter a little bit here on the top. Okay. All this fun texture and all this good business. Now the other brush I was using was that Blade Run brush. Okay, now for that, we're gonna go super bright. We're gonna go for like a pure white even. Right, why not? We'll just do this. And we'll pop that on top, but much smaller. <laughs> I had the brush like huge. There we go. And then I can sort of blend that in. And let's use that lovely Mr. Chunk. Uh, no, actually, you know what, what was I using? I was in the Bowie brushes. I think I was using that Heroes. I like that brush. This is the brush we're using at the, on the outset. Remember this? Mix it up. Use the brush that feels good for the exercise, okay? For whatever it is you're trying to paint at that moment. Hide the sketch, how are we looking? Are we losing the tail right there? We can always lock the layer transparency. We can go darker right here, and we can just darken it up down there. Okay, go even darker, go warmer. And just hit that right there so it stands out. And we can finesse it all the live long day, okay? Finesse, 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 finesse. See this? Look at this, it's so easy. Come down here and just erase away that little bit, okay? And up here where the ears are, let's grab some of this color. Let's go back to those ears and lock their layer transparency and just throw a bit of that color in there. Even a little bit of the color from the from the nose, just to kind of unify things a little bit. And then here along the edge, if you wanted to, you can even do this. You can just add a bit of a change right there. Um, I'm gonna find that nose. There's that little nose for me right there. And the nose, if I want to, I can also grab that color, go a little cooler and just add a little little highlight there. I want to make sure that's locked, that layer transparency is locked. Like that. See that? So we've got about like, what, 25 minutes left or maybe even 30 minutes. And look how far along we are with this so far, right? We've got the fox pretty well taken care of. We can always go in and mess around with that a little bit more, but for now, it's looking decent. All right, and then all we have to do is turn our sketch back on and see what else we have. There's some big shapes we can work with really, really fast, right? This tree, for example, that's a big fat shape. So what I do is I go between the two layers I have, right, with the snow. So here's my background layer of snow. I just go on top of that 
and this is where I'll, I'll throw in the trunk of that tree. Okay, so I've already got a nice sketch there. It's going to help me to build this correctly. Okay, and I'm going to build it in little, little parts. Okay, hold down the shift key. All right. There we go. Just building it in parts, building it in parts. And again. And remember folks, if you want to use the lasso tool in an additive way all the way through, you don't want to hold down a shift key, use any key commands. You have this option right up here. You can change the mode for the lasso tool. If I tap on this, I'm automatically, with every selection I make, going to be adding to what's there, okay? So it's not like I have to rely on that shift key. If I know I'm gonna be doing something like this where I'm drawing a lot of selections, one after another, right? If that's gonna be happening, then I can just go ahead and operate using that mode from the get-go, okay? These little branches here. You can always change your mind about your design. You can change where things go, right? I felt like that needed a few more branches. I can always change my mind later and see if that like still feels good or if it's just it's too much. So many of these decisions are, you know, it's like spur of the moment kind of thing. You react to what you're to what you're seeing on the canvas. You go, oh, that that looks good, or I thought that would look good, but you know what? It doesn't. When that happens, hey, no big deal. Like we said on the outset, the beautiful thing about working this way is all that flexibility, right? Whoops, everything is flexible. Now this little guy is hanging out right here, but he's got another branch underneath him. I'm actually going to change the shape of that like this. My Wacom pen just knocked my microphone. Okay, so feeling pretty good about the tree here. It's all just one shape, right? And this is the only remaining bit. You notice I'm not really deviating that much from the sketch. And the reason for that is because I already made some edits to these shapes in the sketch phase. You know, I had different shapes here. Um, you didn't see that, that step, but, uh, one of the things I'm always reminding people is not to don't, if you have an idea and you put it down and it's not great, you know, please don't leave it there. Go ahead and change your mind. It's good to change your mind. If something doesn't look good, do something about it. Okay. Back to our crazy brushes here. We could use the Ziggy brush for this. I don't know. It doesn't matter. You can use the oddity brush for this. Okay, this one, I'm gonna go ahead and increase the color dynamics on this. I'm gonna increase the brightness jitter, pop it up to like 18%, okay? Hide my sketch for just a moment. Now there's my active selection, okay? Got the, the layer selected that I want. I'm gonna unclip it. Hang on a minute, this is what I need to do. Make a new layer, put it up here. And then, there we go. For now, I'll pop it up, I'll pop it up here where it's not clipped to anything and I'll, I'll come in and I'll move it later. All right, now I've got this brush, see what it does? 
I want you to see the shapes that are happening inside that tree. And when I zoom in, you're going to see how fun these shapes are. Okay, they are super fun. See all that? Look all, oh, so lovely. All these beautiful, interesting shapes. So nice. Okay, I'm going to go a little cooler, a little lighter. And just see what happens if I throw some of that on top right there. So what I don't want is for that dark, dark, dark silhouette to be like taking over everything. Okay. Now I'm going to go a little darker and I'm going to use the darker colors for some of these branches out here, these little twiggy twiggies and this area up here. All right. So as I go darker, all right, I want you to move towards the light, which is where the interesting stuff's happening um, in this drawing. Okay. Deselect and let's take a look. There, I'm gonna move around. You can see all the lovely things that are happening here. Now, do you see why this is so much more fun than just making a selection and then filling it with color like straight out? Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's a fine method. But look at all the things you can do with brushes when you work this way. Okay, look how much personality and character everything has as a result of this. It's a completely, completely wonderful way of working. It really makes a big difference. It does, it does. All right, so with my tree, I have options here. I can simply take the tree and I can do this. I can just erase part of it like that. And now it's sitting in the snow there, okay? I could even take that brush. I could hold down my uh, tilde key. If you don't have a North American keyboard, um, you can just change the brushes mode to clear, okay? And this lets me just do stuff like this, like kind of like make it so that it's got a dusting of snow there at the bottom. Okay, that last little bit was probably a bit too much, but see what I mean? I'm just erasing it. I'm using the brush to erase. That's what I'm doing right there. All right, coming back to this layer, um, I notice that I missed this little bit I was when I was busy painting and making all those shapes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna add it now. I'm gonna come here and I'm just gonna pop that up here like that, make sure I grab that area. Go back to that brush I was using a moment ago with all the geometry, okay, right down here in the fall 2022, the cubercle right there. And just snag uh, some of that color I was working with, throw that in there, grab that darker color. There we go. Don't want that to get lost. All right, much, much better, much, much better. Gonna even come over here and just add a little bump right there. Um, because, why, why, why? Because I don't want that shape to disappear behind the tree and then we like don't understand how it reemerges. You know what I mean? So that just adds a little bit of clarity. Now, just for fun, watch this. I'm gonna take this area up here Okay, we're gonna have a tree sitting in front of there um, or coming out of there in a moment, but I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna grab this section right here, okay? And I'm gonna make it a little darker right here. And then on that clipping mask layer, do the same thing, make it just, just a hair darker, a little bit more color, a little, little bluer right there. Now the reason for this is I wanna separate those hills from one another, see that? And that adds just another tiny bit of depth and makes it a bit more interesting, okay? You can get rid of this part of the tree. Bye-bye. Oh, I should be saving this, I'm not saving it. There we go. Saving to the cloud, it's so safe, so lovely. I know it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, got some issues here where the fox is kind of blending in with that background there. What do I do? Come over here to the fox and we have this little clipping mask right here, okay? And I just take that color, darken it a hair, right there along that edge, just for a second. See that? And that's enough to pop it forward. Everything you do, this can be subtle, right? But it's enough to just push the values one way or the other so that you get some contrast and you can read things clearly. 
Remember these tricks. These are really handy little tricks. I know you're going to use them. Okay. Hey, let's get that other tree uh, going on now in the background. So we're going to cut here. And we're going to make a layer. Let's bring our sketch back for a minute. Okay, I'm going to actually knock that back just another hair. There we go. So I can really see what I'm doing. And all I'm going to do now is the same thing as before. Make the shape. Okay. This I, I'm going to loosely follow what I've got here. Okay. This. And there's my shape. I'm going to work with these colors here in the background. I'm going to just push them a little cooler, a little deeper, right? Like that. And we've already got a great brush selected for this, so I just throw it in there. Just throw it in there. Bam, 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 bam. Just like that. Okay. And I'm just going to turn that sketch off for a minute and check my values and see how that looks. Yeah, that reads pretty nicely. And the next thing I'm going to do is, this is so easy, I'm just going to right above it, okay, just throw a bit of snow in there. Bumpy, bumpy, bumpies little bits of snow that kind of like landed on there. Okay, just for a little bit of personality. Okay. Okay. Wasn't that the teacher from Beavis and Butthead? Okay. No, it's um, South Park, right? And the idea here is I just want these to be kind of interesting shapes, right? They don't have to be, you know, the most amazing things you've ever seen. It's just to make that whole area a bit more juicy. And then I just do this. Same brush. Kablamo. Okay. I can always come in. I can darken the sky around that area, right? Figure out all my contrast. Um, but what do we have left? Well, we've got a little squirrel friend. Let's go ahead and take care of that. Okay, bring the, the sketch back. And up here on top of everything else, I'm just gonna make the silhouette. You saw how we did this before, right? I just make the silhouette. There we go. My kids and my wife call squirrels chasse. And it's a long story behind that. But um, when we see a squirrel, we just say chasse. Uh, the short version of the story is that my daughter, um, and she was like two, just decided that squirrels were named Chasse. That was the name that every squirrel had, Chasse. And so it just stuck. That's what we call squirrels. I know you needed to know that. That was important information. So I'm here to share the important information with everybody out there, okay? All right, so there's a nice little silhouette. We can reuse this color right here. Okay, or we can use a more gray color because, you know, I don't know where what squirrels look like where you live, but ours are definitely kind of grayish, right? They're pretty gray. Um, now we've got all our brush options. I can just stick with this brush because it's been doing me so many lovely favors and adding so much nice texture and whatnot, right? Throw that in there. I'm gonna go a little darker now, just as we come in towards the head here. And then also for this little tail area here, just, just like that, just a bit like that. Okay, lovely. Um, now some squirrels have, you know, like a, a lighter tail. Okay, so I can go ahead and I can just throw some of that back there on the underside right there. Okay, and I'll work on the contrast and things like that later. And then for contrast here in the face, I'll just go ahead and throw a bit of that there too as well. All right. And then I'm gonna go super dark, lock the layer transparency. And right here, I'm just gonna make the ears dark. just makes them stick out. See that? Now I can hide my sketch. I don't need it at the moment. And I can see how things are reading. All right, I'm probably gonna have to work on some contrast and things like that with the sky and all that. But what I can do is same as before, I can just, you know, if I wanted to make a new layer, doesn't matter. I can go ahead and do the eyes. Just like this.
Okay, there you go. Actually, I kind of want those to be a bit bigger. Squirrels have big eyes, don't they? So let's do this. We're gonna go big. I know he's changed that later, but I think that looks more squirrely. That just feels more squirrely to me. All right, now we go back to our layer where the layer um, is, the transparency's locked. So I can come in and use that same dark color to make that arm a little darker because it's coming up under the body. And I can do the same thing with the, with the body here and that back that back leg right there, I can just kind of tuck that down like that, just to add a bit of definition, right? I can even come in and do something like this, make like a more clear area for that tail to break into um, a lighter color. I can go for full white here along the edge. And then later I can come in and play around with what's happening in the sky. See, see, see how this is working? It's really coming together. All right, so speaking of the sky, now you have all these choices. You can come in here, go a little cooler, go a little darker, right? And I can really start pushing those contrasts and playing with the brush. I can make the brush bigger, right? I can use a different brush. There's so many to choose from, obviously. You even have things like the Jungle Gym brush. I mean, why not? Just see what it does. If it gets crazy, see something like this. Kind of interesting what that does there. If you find it to be too distracting, just paint over it, right? But some of that'll still come through. So I could grab this now, and I can go back to another brush like a cubercle, right? Or the blade run, and I can just sort of paint over it. I can change the flow of the brush, knock it back down to like 28%. It's not quite as juicy, right? And that just does this. See, that just it's retaining a little bit of that stuff, a little bit of that stuff here and there, okay? And then I can use brushes that are a bit more subtle, right? We were using those uh, recently. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. So we come back over here. Um, let's see, we got the pressure brush, for example. I, I think I remember, oh no, it wasn't that one. In the David Bowie set, I had uh, a nice painterly brush. What was it? Um, hunky, there it is. Used that a little earlier today. And that just kind of like, I pass over everything and that just kind of smooths it out just a hair, but some of that texture is still popping through. Okay. Some of it's still popping through. Go a little bluer, go a little darker. Hit these edges right here. You can almost do like a sort of a vignette thing where you go a little darker out towards the edges, but then make sure that your, your hero characters, right? Have enough contrast so like my squirrel i want there to be a nice bright area behind him so i can even like do this i can kind of come over here and just kind of throw a little light in there like that right up to you see how we're doing this now another cool thing which you've seen me do in a lot of um illustrations here on uh, master class is taking uh your illustration and then at the end popping a layer on top of it and going ahead and adding a bit of texture to that, okay, with a really crazy brush. So for example, if we go into um, the, I wanna say, fall 2021 maybe had the the Vincent Van Gogh brush. Let's see, Vincent, here he is, Vincent. Really like this brush for just like doing um, impressionistic kind of stuff. So we can go super, super blue with this, kind of bluish purple or whatever. And we just, we just paint over the whole thing uh, like this, okay? Go ahead and take your brush settings and take your color dynamics and brush up on that brightness shader. See that? It's gonna make it a lot more extreme. And I pass over the whole thing. And this is gonna be really fun because you've got, first of all, you've got all the textures and interesting things you've already done inside of those selected areas, right? But the other thing is, once I do this here, I'm just gonna make it all the way down to the bottom. I know I'm, beat, I'm just racing the clock. I'm racing the clock, folks. This will keep going on YouTube for another minute or two, but I don't want to do that. I want to I want to make it on time. Okay, so I've got about like 30 seconds left. All right, so I cover this. And you come over here and you do something like overlay. See that? Or soft light. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful thing to do. Okay. 
overlay, for example. So now I'm combining all the textures I already had, right, with that impressionistic texture over the background. And it also adds that, that color that's going to unite everything. All right. You can take that hue and you can shift it and see what it does, you know, to everything. And you can reduce the opacity. You come in here and just take that down to like 50%. And it's just a cool, cool thing to just try at the end of your illustration. Come on, gang. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I certainly did. That's one of my favorite ways to work. Give it a try. Share your work. Tag me on Twitter at Kyle T. Webster and let me know how it goes. Everybody have a great weekend. Thank you for tuning in. I want you to all remember to take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Remember to be kind. And I will say ciao for now. Thank you.